Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be checking out the new mutable customizable character plugin sample project inside of Unreal Engine 5. The mutable customizable character plugin is a brand new plugin introduced in Unreal Engine 5.5 that allows you to have a dynamic character customization system powered by logic that you define in the mutable graph. Essentially, you will define the rules and customizable zones or areas on a given character mesh or character clothing accessories, and then the logic will handle things like procedurally remove parts of the mesh that are overlapping or not visible to the camera. You can set up customizable regions, color regions, and much more. And in this video, we'll be checking out the new mutable sample project, which is currently not available to download right now on Fab. So stick around to the end of the video if you want to see how you can actually download this sample project, because I'll show how to get your hands on this project at the very end of this video. And in this demo, we will look at all the different features that the mutable character customization plugin has to offer. And maybe in another video, I'll be showing you you guys how to set up your own character customization system like the one that you see in this video so if you'd like to see a tutorial like that one make sure that you hit the subscribe button and leave a like on the video and comment down below if that's something you'd like to see and before we get any further on into the video i want to quickly tell you about our sponsor for this video have you ever dreamed of making your own video game are you tired of watching millions of youtube tutorials that don't teach you anything well i was in your same position many years ago and so that's why i created the ultimate unreal engine 5 multi player survival game course. This course will teach you step by step how to create a Steam multiplayer survival game inside of Unreal Engine 5 from complete scratch. You'll learn how to create a drag and drop inventory system, a crafting system where you can craft different types of tools and items. We'll create a harvesting system and gathering system where you can chop down trees, you can mine rocks and pick bushes. We'll add a complete building system where you can build a base and a raiding and plans or tribe system so you can raid other players. We'll even add this open world map and show you how to host the game on a server on Amazon Web Services. This course is jam packed with over 250 course lectures and over 70 plus hours of content to help you get started on your game development journey in Unreal Engine 5. And I made this course because it was extremely hard to get into game development because there was no course like this that shows you start to finish what it takes to make a game. You can pick up the course right now on my website smartpoly.teachable.com or click the top link in the description below. You can get the course right now with a big discount. The price of the course will be raised later on and you don't want to miss out on this limited time offer. So take your game development skills to the next level and check out the course link in the description below. All right, so here we are inside of the demo project. So this is called the Cyborg Demo. And essentially this is like a character creator that is powered by the mutable plugin. So this is our character here in the center. Uh, we have some basic controls. We can zoom in and out. Uh, we can rotate the character. You can see we have some different controls to toggle the weapon, edit the weapon. And let's just start from the top. So I'm gonna hide the weapon. And then let's go ahead and customize some of the clothing. So if I go to the upper close, you can see that we can change the clothing on the character, a uh, very standard character editor. So let's say I want to have this shirt or this jacket. We can change the jacket. And one thing you'll notice is we have a shirt actually underneath. So let's actually say that I take off the jacket. So I have this black shirt. We can customize the shirt. So there's different patterns. And patterns are actually powered through the mutable graph. So that's one thing that you can actually do through mutable. You can take a base model like this plain t-shirt and you can actually define uh, different textures and pattern regions with the mutable plugin. So you can add certain patterns like this. You can also change the color, which is also another thing you can do with mutable. You can have color, different color options. But in addition to that, there's something I'd like to show you guys, which is let's say I want to actually equip this cloth. So you can see this clothing basically is like a full body outfit. It has a shirt or jacket, like a trench coat that reaches all the way down to the waist. So I currently have this jacket on with a shirt. And let's say I switch to the cloth physics. What you're going to notice is if I go into the wireframe, you're going to notice that there is no more clothing or character mesh underneath the character's uh, clothing. So if I switch back to the jacket, see so you have a jacket mesh. We can see the shirt mesh right here. There's no character arms. There's no chest underneath that. It removes the mesh. That's not visible to the camera. So the mutable plugin is all about character optimization because what you can do is you can define these collision volumes that will remove faces of the mesh that are not visible to the camera, which is very helpful for optimization. So even the head, if I look at the head guys, 
since we're using this full helmet piece right up here, you can see that there's no head mesh behind that helmet. It's just the helmet geometry. So again, this has to do with the mutable plugin. So let's actually go to the face here so you guys can see. And we can actually change things like makeup. We have the circuits, which is like the cyborg, cyberpunk customization. We even have morph targets. So you can see that we can adjust things like the nose, the mouth size, and we could add circuits to the left or right side of our face. And let's go to our helmet. So you can see we can change the helmet. Let's actually take off the helmet. And you can see that it actually adds the hood onto our character. So that's another thing you can do. Certain clothing pieces can have helmet options. So for example, like a hoodie, you could have something like that. But if you equip a helmet, it will hide that hood. So this is just more logic that you can program into the graph itself that will automatically handle those different logic behavior based on what you equip to your character. So let's go to the lower clothes because I need to show you guys this feature. Uh, first, let's actually take off this trench coat jacket. So let's go ahead and get that off. So if we go to the lower clothes or the pants, one thing you're going to notice is let's swap to our shoes. And I want you guys to pay attention real closely to the pants down here. What happens when I actually swap out the shoes mesh? And I can toggle the wireframe. So you can see currently again with the pants, there's no character mesh underneath that. Same with the arms up here. So you can see the arm mesh cuts off right at the t-shirt mesh right here. So there's no extra faces that are being shown to the camera. This is the best optimization for a character that you can get in your game. Now look at very closely at the pants. So if I go in the wireframe and I switch to the boots, you can see that the pants mesh right here is automatically moved up. So it looks like the pants is tucked into the boots and you can see that it's been cut off right there. And it kind of looks like the pants have been scrunched up as well. And again, if I go in the wireframe, you can see that the pants mesh cuts off right at the top of the boot. So again, this is another thing that you can do with immutable graph. So if you're wearing something like boots, you can ensure that the pants mesh will not overlap with the boots mesh like that. And I believe this is actually procedural what it's doing. I think what it's doing is actually shrinking the end of this mesh and cutting it off like so, so that it will look like it's tucked in to the boots model. Of course, we can do things like no shoes. And you can see what the player has no shoes on. And we can take off the pants like so. And you can see that we have underneath it a mesh. Even though we can't actually see underneath the mesh, what it will do is we'll spawn in and show you know, the character model, even though it's not underneath the pants model itself. So let's go ahead and customize the character more. We have things like the arms. So in this character, they have things like the cyborg arms. So we can actually change that to just a regular arm. And what you'll notice is it's actually part of the geometry. So if I go into the wireframe, you can see that again, there's no extra mesh underneath the arm. So I can swap it out for a regular character arm or I can swap it back to the cyborg arm so another thing with mutable is the hair itself. So if you go to the helmets again, you can see that the helmet will actually remove any sort of hair mesh on top of the character and as well with the head mesh. So it's all procedural the way that it's doing this. And another neat thing about this is that let's actually remove the helmet and we'll go to our upper clothes and we have hoods over here. So let's hide the hood. You can see that the hood also, in addition, will hide the hair mesh. So we toggle the hood on and off Will automatically hide that hair mesh. Now there's a couple of other additional things that you can customize in here and that is stickers. So if you go to the stickers you can add a layer for stickers and this is a really neat editor that is just part of this character editor that you can do with the mutable plugin which is adding layers for stickers. So as you can see we can add a different sticker image to a different icon and whatever we specify we can actually move it around by taking this little movement gizmo it'll actually spawn in this movement gizmo which is sort of like projecting this decal or this sticker texture. Uh, we can rotate it It'll give us a rotation tool and it actually crashed right there. Yeah, as you can see, it's still obviously early, but you can add different stickers on to your mesh and it has a basic sticker editor where you can change things like the opacity. You can add multiple stickers and you can move it around uh, using the sticker gizmo. So there's quite a bit of different other things you can do. You can add different tattoos. Again, this is like the sticker editor where you can pick different tattoos, body tattoos, and you can actually move it around. So again, it's part of the editor in which you can add different tattoo layers. So again, it's pretty neat how you can completely customize the mesh. And I'm pretty sure 
what this can do in addition is it can bake these textures, these tattoos onto the actual texture. So instead of having these layered on the material, I believe Mutable also has the option to bake textures so you can optimize it uh, for runtime. So yeah, that is pretty much the Mutable plugin. Uh, one thing I actually want to show is we can actually edit the weapon. So if I press Z, we can show the weapon and we can go into the weapon editor. So if you press W, we can actually customize, fully customize a weapon. So you can change things like the bodies, uh, we can change the barrel, the magazine. So Mutable can really be used for pretty much anything, any sort of skeletal mesh that you want to customize. And in this case, they're showing it working with a weapon. Uh, we can change things like the handling, the grips itself. And I'm wondering if that will actually change parts of the animation, like the way the player holds the weapon. And we can also change things like the color. So you can see we can completely customize the weapon. We can add stickers as well. And let's go back to our gun. Press W. Now you can see that we have our updated weapon and it has the new stickers, it has the new color regions, all the new stock handles and everything. And also I want to show you guys the real-time morph target. So let's actually go to our helmet and take that off. And let's go to our face and show you guys a real-time morph target by pressing M. You can see that we have morph targets on the face that are working. Now it'd be interesting to see uh, how this will work with morph targets on the body. And also another thing that people are wondering is if this will work for things like having a female or male character mesh, if the clothing will automatically deform to fit uh, either the female or the male's uh, character body. So that is the big question that everyone has right now. So far, I haven't figured out or I haven't seen anything like that in this plugin uh, in my research, but Epic actually uses mutable in I believe Fortnite, so it'd be interesting to see how they exactly handle stuff like that, if they have their own solution uh, for handling that. But yeah, if I find out, I'll let you guys know down in the comments. But this whole thing is powered by Blueprint as well as the Mutable Graph. So everything in this project is actually powered by the Level Blueprint. So let's open up the Level Blueprint and show you guys. So we head over to the graph. This is pretty much all the different inputs all the different input keys. You can see they're programmed in the level blueprint. Uh, and if they actually release this sample project, they'll probably move this into its own separate uh, blueprint actor, like a character or something like that. But as you can see here are all the different events. We have the widgets and then into the content, we have the actual mutable graph or the character customizable object. So in mutable, you have these different customizable objects. So in our case, we have the character, which is like the base a uh, customizable object. So here's what the graph looks like. So I believe what they've done is they've defined all the different customizable regions. And then on top of that, what you can do is you can create even more customizable objects per each uh, region or customizable part of the character. So you make a customizable object for the shirt region, you make one for the pants, for the boots, for the head, and much more. And then you could actually create customizable objects for certain accessories, like a gun. You could define the rules to customize if you wanted to customize even further, like a weapon. So in this graph, you can see we have under the instance parameters, we can change some of the different values. We have this age slider, which will actually change like a morph target on the character, which is pretty interesting. You can make the character look pretty old. So we can change the age, that will update the scope of mesh. We have all these different materials, these circuit spots, and we have different eye colors. So we can adjust the eye colors as different presets. We can have different hair. So we have short hair, half shaved, and braided. So basically we have all the different types of customizable objects in here. And all these parameters are defined over here in the graph. So you have the base character mesh being imported and you have it broken up into different pieces, which is what they're using to define all the different uh, regions and different object groups. And then let me show you guys some other different things. So if I go to the body, see that it is split up into different sections. We have boots, we have arm L, arm R, eyes, hair braided, pretty much everything is split up. Let's actually go to the t-shirt and go to the t-shirt customizable object. If I open this up, this is the section just for the t-shirt. So basically this will define all the rules for adding a t-shirt to the character model. Things like the different patterns, texture nodes for adding different patterns. And it also has things like removing the cyborg arm parts. So basically if you have a arm underneath the shirt, it will automatically remove and 
delete those faces. So as you can see, you can add different customizable objects and different graphs per different region of your character. Now I'm going to make a separate video showing you guys how to create something like this, hopefully from complete scratch and how to tie it all together with a blueprint character. So if you guys want to see a video like that, make sure that you hit the subscribe button Leave a like on the video and comment down below if that's something you'd like to see. Now to actually download this sample project, you'll have to head over to the developer's GitHub of the Mutable plugin. So I'll leave the link to this in the description below, but basically this is the legacy sample for 5.4. So this actually hasn't been updated to 5.5 and I think they're going to release the official sample project for 5.5 soon. So you probably shouldn't even have to bother with this, but I downloaded the cyborg demo project right here and then you can just open it up with Unreal Engine 5.4 and they also have some limited documentation on the GitHub. So if you guys want to get started, this is a great sample project to uh, dig apart. And also there's a lot of meshes that you can play around with in here and used to set up uh, different customizable characters because everything in here is actually modular and you know all of the pieces are here to start working on learning the new mutable plugin. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. What did you guys think about the new mutable customizable characters plugin? Is this something that you guys would like to learn more about? Let me know down in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.